I think he still has a very strong hold on the Republican Party. Uh, and I know that he wants to run again in 2024. Uh, and we saw actually most of the candidates that he endorsed did want, did win. Of course, there were some that didn't, um, but we see candidates like uh, Mehmet Oz, who is still in the race neck and neck, but until he was endorsed by Trump, uh, he wasn't doing particularly well. So he's able to bring attention to candidates that, that might not ordinarily get this type of attention. Uh, and I think he has such a stronghold on the Republican Party because they believe that he uh, is able to inspire participants to come out, or voters, excuse me, to come out in, in droves, that their their passion for him uh, is so much stronger than the way people feel for other candidates, whether it be like Mike Pence, who could who could run in the election, or, or Rob DeSantis. Uh, so he seems to have this charismatic hold on people that other candidates don't have. Well, it's, it's a charismatic hold, but it also is a fear that if they don't seek his endorsement, that they will not get pre-selection. Um, it was interesting, though, that the, the sort of scandal-plagued uh, congressman who had been backed by Trump, Madison Cawthorn, was defeated. Do you think that had more to do with what his term played out like rather than Trump's backing? Yeah, I didn't think it had much to do with Trump's backing in this instance. It was just that he just kept making, Cawthorn kept making mistake after mistake. He came to the airport with a loaded gun. Uh, he was driving with without a, a license. Uh, he made comments that uh, President Zelensky was a thug, and he accused Congress uh, men and women of inviting him to drug-fueled orgies uh, when that turned out to be false. So everything he kept doing... Uh, he was just basically digging his own hole. And I think the Republicans are probably relieved that he didn't win his primary. Yeah. There were, I mean, you look at Dr. Mehmet Oz, you see the governor of Pennsylvania, Doug Mastriano. Uh, these are candidates that, would they have been credible candidates for the Republican Party 10 years ago? No, and I think that is really one of the negative side effects of Trump, of this celebrity type of candidate. But also, you're, you're getting a, the quality of candidate is just deteriorating. They have no experience in, in politics, and they don't seem to be committed to the rule of law or democracy or democratic values or democratic institutions. We see with the, the case of um, Doug Mastriano, uh, he's this far right candidate that just didn't believe that the election results were were valid. And he promises, if elected, that he's going to assign the secretary of state to basically change the voter rolls to make everybody re-register. And this is a way of really attacking, uh, you know, underprivileged communities that, that find it very difficult to register to vote and particularly uh, minorities. And so we're, we're seeing a a shift that is really, really devastating for democracy with the rise of Trump and these Trump-like candidates. Yeah. So when the Democrats say that November and then again 2024 is really the last chance to save American democracy, that doesn't sound like an understatement. It's not an understatement. I mean, I thought that about 2020. It was incredibly uh, pivotal election and we saw that Trump did everything he could using violence to overturn it, tried to actually stage a coup, something that would have been considered unthinkable in American democracy before Trump. And so we've got another series of elections coming up that are also equally important. But the problem is the Democrats haven't been that great at selling what they've been doing, uh, getting people out to vote. They haven't been performing very well with Hispanics and other communities that might normally vote for them. And so they're going to face a really uphill battle ahead. I, I can't imagine that the Democrats are going to be able to hold on to the House and the Senate in the 2022 midterms coming up. Yeah. What, did, what, did, what was your reading of the request from the Justice Department for transcripts of interviews that had been conducted behind closed doors by the January 6th committee? Could that be a portent of legal... Um, problems for Donald Trump? Well, you would think it would be. I mean, this investigation has been going on for over a year now to see 
whether or not federal law has been violated in other different types of uh, crimes and, and misdemeanors. And there's been a real struggle um, to, to go after those that are the most responsible. You've seen that many people that are sort of in the lower level of involvement have faced some repercussions. Uh, but it would be important to see people higher up involved, particularly Donald Trump. He's been the mastermind behind this whole January 6th uh, insurrection, and we've seen very little attack on him personally. We've seen all of his underlings and those associated with him face some kind of retribution, but not him personally. So there's hopes that this uh, investigation is expanding and that they'll go after those that are at the top. Yeah. Good to talk as always, Natasha. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.